One of the most frustrating things being in this body after having served 16 years with the Department of Corrections is who's not here. We have teachers, we have nursing, we have corrections officers. This stuff has been going on for so long and increasing so heavily, and yet I don't see PSCOA, I don't see AFSCME, I don't see SEIU, I don't see the PSEA organizing something like this. They get paid to do this kind of advocacy. Why hadn't they done that? Why have they not gotten with family members and retirees and brought their people in here? As uh, Lisa said, we're all comrades. Why hasn't this been done? This gives you folks a sense of the isolation that the people inside those walls, the people trying to protect your communities, are feeling. Why isn't there some huge outcry from the people who are supposed to represent us? And I'm talking about the legislature, too. Why is the leadership not using the subpoena power to get to the information that they need to get? I've sent a right to no request to the Department of Corrections for the things like the uh, Violence Reduction Committee. Let me give you an example of what I get back. We are supposed to be the ones holding them accountable. Redacted, redacted, redacted. And it's not just this. It's this. It's this. Page after page after page. This is the actual email I got back from the Department of Corrections. We have the ability in the legislature to start holding these people accountable. Act 19 of 1842. Each branch of the legislature shall have the power to issue their subpoena as, to their heretofore, as heretofore practiced into any part of the Commonwealth and by attachment to compel the attendance of all persons summoned as witnesses. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically it says that if they fail to show up, if they fail to testify before the bar of the legislature in either house, they go to the Dauphin County Jail until we call them back, and if they refuse again, they're there until the next legislative session. You want to start getting answers? Hold that threat over the, top, over the heads of the people who are supposed to be responsible for the safety, the security, the health, and the welfare of our employees. The legislature is accountable for a lack of action. The unions are accountable for the lack of action. The Secretary of Corrections is accountable, and so is the governor. The fact that they have shown contempt and lack of caring for their people has got to change. It's demonstrable. It's interesting, Secretary Wetzel said, sometimes there needs to be a change in leadership for healing to take place. Well, Secretary Wetzel, there are three fingers pointing back for every one you're pointing out. We've got other situations going on, like with Graterford closing. There are reports that there were 12 inmates left inside that institution after they closed it and transferred the inmates over to Phoenix. How in the world did, how, did count clear? You don't have any control over the inmates and understanding where they are. You don't have any idea, or you didn't before, what cells they were in. How are you preventing rapes when you don't have the inmates' photos up on the door and the list of photos uh, next to the officer's station showing where that inmate's supposed to be. We've got serious problems inside those institutions, and I'm calling on the leadership in both the House and the Senate to start using the subpoena power to start getting people in here, to start getting these uh, memos that are going around, changing policy without going through the policy changing processes. And I'm calling on you to start 
getting EORs, the exceptional occurrence reports, so that we actually have an idea of what's going on instead of getting this kind of garbage from the department. We are supposed to be holding the executive branch accountable and we are not doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got people who are hurting, we've got family members who are scared, we've got staff who are scared. We have staff who are leaving. One gentleman that couldn't be here is a combat vet. He left a couple weeks ago from an institution because he felt less safe there than he did in Afghanistan. We've got a serious problem going on inside the Department of Corrections, and this is just the first step towards addressing it. And to my fellow corrections staff, I understand the ones who aren't here why. And I understand your concerns. There are several of us who are willing to fight the fight, and we're going to proceed. The mission starts now. Thank you.